Heard of ChatGPT yet? Because if you haven't, I'd be surprised. It has been taking the internet by storm. There have been Twitter threads, articles, YouTube videos, and a whole bunch of new applications built around this technology alone. So ChatGPT is basically a chatbot that uses a powerful language model to generate responses to things you say. You can ask it questions, share stories with it, ask it to generate content, code, even have a general conversation with it. And the best part is, it can actually hold a pretty decent conversation. Now, if you wanna play around with ChatGPT, you can head over to OpenAI's website and try it there. But in this video, we're going to be building our own version of ChatGPT on iOS with SwiftUI and using the technology OpenAI has made available to us. So we're gonna dive straight into it and start building our project. Alrighty, so to get started, we're going to jump into Xcode and create a new project. So we'll go File, New, Project. And once we start that, we are going to select iOS create a new app, hit next. I'm going to call this chat GPT and select SwiftUI and make sure Swift is selected. Any of the other two options, uh, there's no problem with that. And we're going to hit next and create our project. Now I've already got a project set up, so I'm going to jump straight into our content view and open up our canvas and make sure that our application is working. So I'm going to have a look at our preview refresh the preview. So once the preview loads, you'll be able to see that the application is now working. And just to make sure everything is all good, I'm going to remove some text from here and make sure that reflects in the preview. So before we get started with anything from OpenAI, we're going to go ahead and build the user interface that we're going to use uh, for our ChatGPT application. Now ChatGPT is a chatbot, so the user interface is going to be very similar to a chat interface. And the way we're going to build it is by having sent and received messages, also including a text field for us to be able to create and type a message, and then a send button to send that request through. So to get started, I'm going to change this to a lazy VStack so that our list can be dynamically loaded and then pop this inside of a scroll view. And I'm going to maintain the padding that Apple's added for us by default so that everything can have some spacing on the edges. I'm going to clear this out and replace this with a piece of text just to make sure that everything is working. So we can see we have a scroll view with a stack and obviously there's one element in there. The next thing I'm going to do is create an array of messages. So we want to create a state variable, chat messages, and I want this to be an array of chat messages, so chat message, which we haven't created yet and we will do in just a moment. And then to make sure that we don't get any errors here, let's go ahead and create our chat message object. I'll make this type string, content will also be a string and we will have date created so that we can order our messages by most recent. And then we also want to keep track of who sent the message. So whether it was us or it was ChatGPT that sent the message, we want to keep track of that. So we're gonna create a message sender enum, one sender case, which is me, and the other is GPT. Obviously you can rename these however you like. Now one thing I like doing is using static variables within an extension to create some sample uh, instances of an object. So I'm going to create an extension of chat message, and I'm going to make this an array of chat messages. So if I say chat message and the ID, I'm just going to give it a random UUID. And the content is going to be sample message from me. The sender is myself and date created is just date. So I'm going to copy and paste this a few times. Now we'll make sure that we change the senders so that they're correct and also the text so we know where the text came from. So now that we've got some sample data, let's show this in our scroll view and vStack. I'm going to add a for each and I'm going to iterate through every message in our chat messages message, make sure we identify each message so that SwiftUI is able to refresh and update those if any changes occur, which they will. And just to make sure this all works, we're going to display some text, which will contain message.content. And then we obviously need to change this from being an empty array to being chat message.sample messages. And hopefully we should see our messages show up in the preview. There we go. So we can see our messages showing up right up top. Now to style these messages, I'm going to pull this text out and I'm going to create a view builder function. So runc message view, and it's going to take in a chat message and it's going to return some view. And this is the view that we want to return. So we want to return that piece of text and replace the message up here that we had. And now we can start styling. So I'm going to add a background color. This is going to be a conditional modifier. So if the message dot sender is equal to me, I want the background to be blue 
And if it was from GPT, I want it to be dot gray with an opacity of 0 0.1. And now we can see that it's a little hard to read. So I also want to add a foreground color for when I've sent a message. So if I sent it, the foreground color will be white. And if ChatGPT sent it, the foreground color will be black. Now, of course, this won't work too well with dark and light modes. So make sure you factor that in when you're dealing with your colors. Just pop in some padding before the background. And then after the background, we're going to round the corners. And now we have something that looks a lot like an iMessage chat. And the last thing that I wanna do with the messages is push them to either side, depending on who sent the message. So I'm going to wrap this in an H stack and I want a conditional spacer on either side. So if message.sender is equal to me, I'm going to add a spacer on the left. And if the sender was GPT, I'm going to add a spacer on the right. Now we have a chat user interface that puts my messages on the right and chat GPT is on the left. Now to finish off our user interface, we're going to add a text field on the bottom and also a send button. So what we're gonna do is wrap our scroll view in a V stack. And at the bottom of the V stack, we're going to have an H stack, which contains our text field and our button. So our text field's title is going to say, enter a message and the text is going to be message text. So we need to create a state variable to keep track of that. And we'll make that an empty string. And this will have message text. Make sure we pop this. And for the button, we're going to say the label on this is just text with send. We'll add a background and a foreground of dot white, add some padding and round the corners. And I'm going to grab all of this or most of it and add it to our text field, except for the text field. I want the background to be gray, opacity 0.1 and keep the corner radius. And there we have it. We have pretty much a chat view. So we can enter a message here. Hello, how are you? And then press send, but nothing happens here. So the last thing we wanna do is connect up our send button and also the ability to hit enter or return and have this send the message as well. So let's create a quick function down the bottom, send message, and this is going to print message text. And we're going to trigger this on our button click. And we can also add the on commit closure to our text field. We can't see the printing here, but what we can do is message right at the end, message text equals empty. So we're just going to clear our text. So let's give that a go. Hello, press send and our message text clears. So now we've got our user interface that we can interact with to send our messages to OpenAI's API and then receive the responses back. This is the part where we're going to start connecting OpenAI to our application and start getting some decent responses. So the first thing we wanna do is jump over to OpenAI. So on their website, it's openai.com and we jump up to the top, click on API and then log in and make sure we log in with our credentials. Once we're logged in, we'll see this dashboard and we wanna to go to the top right corner and select personal go down to view API keys and then create a new secret key. Now I've already got a couple here and make sure you don't share these with anyone because if people do get a hold of this, they can use your API and hit your rate limits and also charge you a whole bunch through OpenAI's billing system if you've connected that up. You might wanna keep track of this because you can't view it after you've created it the first time. You can delete it and then create a new one, but you can't copy it and use it for the future. Now for the API key, I'm going to store it in a constants file. I've created a file called constants. There's obviously better ways to store your API keys. I use constants for other things, but just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to store it over here. So we're gonna create an enum called constants and a static let open AI API key. And I'm going to store my API key right here. That'll make it a lot easier for me to reference when making our API calls. The next thing we're going to do is set up our open AI service. If I'm ever making API calls to a particular service, I'd like to organize those in a service. So I've created an open AI service. And all that is, is just a class called open AI service. It has a base URL and the function that we'll be calling. So send message and it takes message, which is of type string. Now the base URL we're going to grab from open AI's website, head over to open AI, jump in their documentation. And on the left-hand side, we'll see API reference. Down at completions, we'll be able to find the endpoint that we wanna hit. So we want this one. This is the completions endpoint. You can use the AI image generators, a whole bunch of other things, code completion, but this is the one that we're after. So this is a post request, and we're gonna copy this URL and paste it in our base URL. Now we're almost ready to start making API calls. The last thing I wanna do is import a Swift package called Alamifier. Now you can do this using CocoaPods, but I prefer Swift Package Manager. So if you head over to Alamifier, jump on their website, grab their GitHub URL, file, add packages, and then enter your package URL at the top. Alamifier will come up. I like to make sure I select up to next major version and we'll have Alamifier imported into our project. 
So let's import a Lama file and let's start with our request. So let's go back to OpenAI's documentation to see how this request is structured. So for our completions request, we want to send through a model, a prompt, and the other thing I'm going to add is temperature. Now temperature controls how random the responses you get back are going to be. The closer you are to one, the more random the responses will be. The closer you are to zero, the more repetitive and determinative these responses are going to be. So I like to pick something around 0.7 for a good value, but you can play around with that and see what works best. There are a bunch of other parameters we can pass in. So you can have a read through the documentation and see what works best for whatever you're working with. So to do this, I'm going to jump back into the code and create the body for our request. So I'm going to create a struct to hold the body and it's going to be an open AI completions body and this is going to conform to encodable so we can encode this in our request we want to have the model which is of type string we want the prompt also of type string and we want to have our temperature and the temperature is going to be of type float and it's also going to be option we're going to start with building the body for this and the model we're going to be using is text da vinci 003 to find the rest of these you can jump in the playground Click playground over here. And there are a bunch of models you can use. Text DaVinci 3 is the most capable model, but it will charge you more and it takes more tokens per request. You've got text Curie and a bunch of others and also code DaVinci, which will help with generating code. The prompt will be our message and the temperature we're going to pass in 0.7. Here's when we start building our requests. So we say AF and the request we want to have a method, we want parameters, we want an encoder and we want headers so that we can pass in our API key. So for the URL, we'll pass in the base URL, we'll pass in our HTTP methods. In fact, our base URL is actually up to V1. So what we want here is actually base URL, plus completions. And this way we'll be able to use this for a bunch of other requests. Now our parameters, we're going to pass in our body. Our encoder is just going to be JSON encoder and we'll create our headers. And this is where we pass in our API key. So we want authorization and this will have a bearer token. And this is where we pass in constants.openAI key and we pass our headers into the request. So this is pretty much the request we're going to be passing. And now all that's left is to receive this. So we're going to get response with a completion handler and print the data. The only thing we need to do is make a way for us to call this function. So let's jump back into our content view and add at the end of our padding an on appear function. We need to jump up here and create an instance of our service. And on appear, we're going to say open AI service dot send message, generate a tagline for an ice cream shop and we're going to build and run. Now we can see that the request succeeded, but we weren't able to see anything. Now we can see that the now we can see that the request succeeded, but nothing that we can actually work with. From this point onwards, I'm going to close the preview and I'm just going to keep the simulator on the right because now we're working with some real data. So to make sure we have some decent output that we can read, I'm going to change this from data to response string. Now it is a bit hard to read, but if you have a look somewhere in here, we can see the coolest place for creamy treats. So it shows us how many total tokens we used. So 23 were used on this one. We're going to jump back to OpenAI's documentation, have a look at the response structure and be able to create an object that we can decode our response into. So if we have a look here, the response that we're getting looks something like this. I can see the main things we want here are the ID, the choices, that's about it. So let's create an object that's called OpenAI completions response. And we're going to have ID string let options and our options going to be an array of completion options so open ai completion options this is going to have text of type string now we need to make sure that both of these conform to decodable so we can decode these from our request and now we can jump back up here and change this from response string to response decodable and we want the of function we want to decode our open ai response dot self and completion handler. So this is our response. We'll be able to see the same data, but a little cleaner. Uh, one thing I messed up was options. This is actually choice. So this is choices. So this should be choice. Now, if we build and run, now we're able to see it's a lot more organized. Now what we have is an open AI completion response and shows us cool off with our creamy treats. So now to be able to see this, we need to pass this back to our user interface. So we're going to add a return 
and it's going to return any publisher. But for that, we need to import combine and we're going to return any publisher. And this is going to have an open AI response and an error. And down here, we're going to return a future with a promise. Grab this, pop it in here. And of course, we self to avoid any memory leaks. God let self equals self. And because we're using a future, we erase to any publisher. We make sure we have our self before our base URL. So we've got no errors now. And instead of printing, we want to now return our response. So let's form a switch statement, response.result, and now check the cases. So in the case of a success, and in this case, we're going to promise dot success the result. And then over here, we're going to have the failure, let error. And in our case, we're going to promise dot failure and send the error back. And cool, no errors. So let's jump back to our content view. And now instead of having this in the on appear, we're going to remove this, get rid of that. And we're gonna pop this in our send messages. So before we clear the text, we wanna get rid of this. Before we clear the text, we're going to say open AI service dot send message. We're gonna pass in our message text. And then we're going to sync on this. So we've subscribed to that. Now the completion in here is where you would handle error responses. And now we have our response. And in order to subscribe to this properly, we're going to have state holding our cancelables. To do this, we need to import combine over here as well. Best place for this, I normally put these in my view model, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're gonna have them over here. This is going to be a set of any cancelables. And then now we're going to store in cancelables. Now, before we send this message, we're going to add our message into the array. So now we're gonna remove these sample messages and start off with an empty array. When we send our first message, we're going to add our message into the chat messages. So we're first going to create my message is equal to chat message. Inside this, we're going to have a UUID and we're going to pass in the content, which is my message text. The date created will be the current date and the message sender is me. So now I've sent this message. And once we receive the response, we're then going to create a message from ChatGPT. GPT message is equal to chat message. And this is going to have the ID from the response. And the content is going to be response dot. And now we have choices. Choices is an array. So let's grab the first item from that array dot text. And instead in here, we're going to put our text response. The date created will also be the current date and the sender is GPT. So now our chat messages dot append, I'm going to add my message. And then also down here, chat messages dot append GPT message, build and run again. And now we say write a tagline for an ice cream shop. We hit send. And now we have cool down with us, the sweetest treat around. Well, everything's connected up now and we pretty much have a chat GPT as an iOS app. Now, one thing we will notice with the response is that before the response itself, we've got quotation marks and we've also got two new lines. So we're going to trim the new lines first. So we're going to say text trimming characters in white spaces and new lines. And now to remove the others, we're going to union with another character set characters in, and this is just a string. So we can add our quotation string and that should remove the quotes at the beginning. So now we've trimmed the new lines and the quotations, and we're pretty much able to see a clean string chat with this. So I've also asked it to write a short blog about technology. It looks like it cut at the first piece of the string. Now, if you notice that the text length is too short, one thing you might wanna add is max tokens. Now the default for the API is 16, but if you have a look at their playground, they default to 256. So we'll go to max tokens. We'll go to our open AI service, let max tokens, or this will be an integer, but we're going to pass it in, max tokens, 256. So if we build and run this, you'll see that our text should be longer. Write a tech blog post. So our text was indeed longer, uh, not long enough to be a blog post, but yeah. So now that we've built ourselves our own chat GPT, I'm going to have a bit of a break and stretch. Peace.